All right, so project two is my favorite. Um, it, uh, <laughs> Because there's a lot of different fun things you can do, and while there is no wrong, there's plenty of good opportunities to do brilliant things. And the, the thing is, is that you can, you know, you can play around, and ultimately it's the technique that gets graded and really looked at. And, you know, so you want to spend some time in doing some techniques well, and there are a lot of them to this. I should say up front that one of the key elements of Project 2, uh, in order to be able to do it, is to organize your files first. That is, here I've got my project folder, and inside this project folder I've got uh, a folder with my text. Now I've already done my headline, so I did that in Illustrator, and since we've already had the Illustrator unit, that's a good thing. Uh, I have the pictures that I'm going to use. This is my background picture. And let me point out also that this background picture is large enough. It's 3,264 pixels wide. Now, that's important because this project for my classes gets printed. And we want the print resolution to be at least 300 pixels per inch. And it's a minimum size of 8 by 10. So we know that the long dimension is over 3,000 pixels, and that's good. That's the minimum. So we're set with that. I've got my other pictures that I'm going to add in. I have an idea of what I'm going to do, and we're all set. So let me just go ahead and flip over to Photoshop here. And here is my Krabby Patty. My, actually, this will be Krabby Daddy at Cape Kiwanda. Cape Kiwanda is an actual place up in Oregon. And this is an actual crab photographed with my iPhone. And yeah, ain't that interesting. So here's the deal. We're going to make selections from other pictures like this one and this one and move them onto this picture. Then we'll use a variety of blending techniques and layer effects or layer styles to make them to create the B-movie poster. By the way, there's another video that's a companion to this project that has some examples of past B-movie posters, what I like, what I don't like. Um, and that might be helpful to watch also. So check that out. Uh, anyway, so the deal is here I've got my base picture. And really what I should do is start a new file altogether. So I'm going to go to File and New. And I'm going to call this Krabby Daddy 1. Uh, and now, down here for background contents, I prefer, well, you have the choice of white, black, and background color. But also, if you scroll down, you also have transparent. And transparent is my preference for a variety of reasons. So I'm going to go ahead and choose transparent now. I'm going to click Create. And this checkerboard pattern is the background visual for a transparent background. So now I've got my background. I'm going to go over here to my crab, and I'm going to select all of it. I'm going to go to my Move tool, and the Move tool is the letter V. That's the quick key. I'm just going to click and drag the whole thing up here, and you'll see that I, my mouse is literally in this tab that says Krabby Daddy at the top. I'm going to come down into the frame. I'm still holding it. Now I'm going to release. Okay. Now I've got my Krabby picture there full frame. It was important to hold the mouse from the crab and hold it until I moved it down into the frame of the new document that had the transparent background. Okay, so there I have that. Now I'm going to go to Max Kawanda. This is my son. He is hiking on the hills up there. And what we would do is take the selection tool. In this case, I'll use the lasso just for a demonstration. And I would select him. Now, of course, this is gonna, you're going to be you know, selecting your pictures and your own content. And this is the kind of stuff that a good selection makes a difference in your grade and makes a big difference in the quality of your work. So make a good selection. I did that really quick because I did this in advance and I made a selection already. I'm going to go up to Select and Load My Selection. Here it is, Max, and 
Click OK. Now he's selected. Now I took the time to do that right and I saved it. Saving your selections is a good habit to get into also. We cover that in a different movie. Uh, so now with him selected, I'm going to go over to the Move tool and just like I made that base image, I'm going to use the Move tool to take Max. I'm going to click and hold. I'm going to drag him up. I'm on the other tab and I'm going to come down onto this picture and I'm going to drop him right there. Now, I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with him here. Uh, maybe have him walking up to step on the crab. Now, he doesn't have any feet, so that's an issue I'm going to have to deal with a little bit later. I have an idea, but I want to get this tutorial moving. Okay, so there I've got him. I'm going to come over to this Davis Creeper picture. Now, this is kind of a creeper. This is actually a headshot I did for a movie that I was in, and yeah, that's another conversation. So I'm going to come here into my... Davis Creeper, and I'm going to just take this and I'm going to move the whole thing up into Krabby Daddy. Uh, once again, I'm still holding it. I'm going to come down and release it here. And sure enough, there's this picture. Okay, so now's a good time for me to point out the layers that have been created in this process. I didn't point this out earlier because, well, we had no layers. But if you look over here on the right side, you'll see that I've gotten this palette here that saying or the panel layer one layer two layer one one two three I had that backwards but you get that you'll see that here in the layers panel you can turn them on and off by clicking on this eyeball here and you can also move them around while you're in the image the move tool up here in the upper left letter V gives us the ability to move around the contents of any layer, but only the layer that is selected. I'm going to move over here to layer two, and you'll see that's Max, and so I'm going to just kind of, I'll put him right there. I'm going to have him maybe crunching the crab at some point. All right, so now I'll go back to layer one. It's there. I'm going to leave that alone. Coming back to my creeper. I'm going to rename the word layer. I'm going to double click on that. I'm just going to call that creeper. And here's the thing. Here's some layer styles. Now, layers get covered in another video also, but in this particular assignment, well, one of the reasons why I like the B-Movie assignment is that we have to use layers, and it gets us into the habit of establishing some layer styles and how they work. So. Here I've got Davis Creeper, this me being a hoodlum criminal, whatever. Yeah, yeah let's not go there. Uh, anyway, so I'm going to actually, my idea here is to take my face and blend it into the crab's face so that the crab is really kind of a silhouette or kind of a, uh, well, you can see my face in the crab, hence Crabby Daddy. Now, it's also not very big. And so I'm going to show you a cheater's way to make my face big enough. In other words, we want it to be about the size of the crab. So with my layer selected, I'm going to come up to Edit and Free Transform. There it is. It's also Command-T. Command-T is your friend. I'm going to hold, click on that, and you'll see that I have my little handles around the edges here. And I can pull a corner... I can make my picture big. I can make myself really horrible. I'm going to hit Command-Z to undo that. If I want to enlarge or shrink it proportionately, in other words, maintain the height and width proportions, I'm going to hold down the Shift key. The Shift key makes that normal. Okay, so there we have it, and there is my face. I'm going to, I think I am going to stretch my face out a little bit because, well, the crab's body is a little oblong. So now I can't see the crab now, right? So I'm going to come up here to my layers panel. I'm just going to turn off. Oh, I can't turn anything off yet because when you use free transform, while you're still in the tool, you have to enter it. You have to hit the return key to set or place the transformation. Now I can come up to my layers panel, click off the eyeball, and there's the crab, and okay, well, it's there. So here's another thing. Up here in the layers panel, we have what we call blending modes. And right up here above the layers, you'll see the word normal. 
Click on the pull down menu of normal. You're going to have darken, lighten, overlay, difference, and vari variations of each of those themes underneath them. Now, in this case, I'm going to go to darken, and yeah, that doesn't look right. So I'm going to go to lighten. That might look better. Ah, now here's, here's check this out. With the lighten blend mode, my face or everything in the image went away that was darker than what is in the background image. There's better ways to explain that, and I can never remember them. But the main point of this assignment in this particular function is to play with your blending modes. There are a lot of different options here. Some of them look horrible. Some of them might be brilliant. I know I'm going to go with Lighten for now. And I'm also, now I can see the crap. I can actually make my eye sockets line up a little bit here. Next to the blending modes is Opacity. That's kind of your transparency of something, too. So if I wanted to make myself really subtle, I could. One of the few times that I actually prefer to be subtle. Um, anyway, so you have some options here. Play with your opacity, play with your blending modes. Now, I think what I want to do is make myself still um, blend in with the crab's head. So I'm going to go free transform a little bit more. And I'm going to stretch myself out a little bit more to match the crab's head shape there. All right. I'm going to hit enter to set it, to place it. Now I want to get rid of all this other stuff here. So I'm going to go to the eraser. Where is the eraser? I bet the eraser is going to be the quick key. Oh, E, and it is. What do you know? So now you can see that I've got the eraser. I'm just going to erase this rest of me. I'm going to leave my head there, but I'm going to erase the rest of my body. Now notice that I'm not erasing from the other layers because I am only in the creeper layer. A big advantage to the layers here. All right, so you can kind of see what I'm doing here. This is a fundamental process of project two. Building your layers, having your stuff built. You need to have these things in place before you start the collage, the building of it. Okay, so now I, if I wanted to do anything with Max, uh, I would be in layer two. If I wanted to do anything with layer one, I'd have to click on that. You can, of course, hold down your shift key and choose all three layers to flatten them and all that kind of stuff. But once you flatten them, you lose your ability to make changes. So for now, you don't want to do that. Now, here's the next thing. I did not bring in the text yet. For the B-Movie poster, there's two types of text you want to have. One is going to be the credits down at the bottom. And you make the credits. You can use the text tool for this. Text tool is over here. It's almost the same as Illustrator. It's different, but for, for our purposes, for this, it's the same. You just click where you want them, and I'm just going to write here, credits, go, here, exclamation point. A lot of students in the past have just copied um, credits from uh, things that they find online. That's kind of fun. Although one student did find a bunch of porn credits, and that was deeply embarrassing for them. Anyway, so I've got some text down here, and you'll look up here text tool made its own new layer. So that happens. But really the better way is that we made our own stylized headline in Illustrator already. So what we want to do is open the Illustrator file. We're going to go to File and Open. We're going to navigate to that text thing in that text folder inside my Project 2 folder. And I can choose actually the AI file or the PDF. Either one is going to work. I'm going to select one, I'm going to hit open. And now, this is one of the beauties of PDFs and Illustrator and all that kind of stuff. When we open it in Photoshop, we get the ability to say whatever size we want it to be. So if we want this to be, oh, say, like nine inches wide, we'll just say nine inches wide. That's going to be too big, but let's go for it anyway. I'm going to go ahead and click OK, and there it is. Okay, so now I, this is in its own document up here. So once again, I come back to my Move tool. I select All. I'm going to come down here, and I'm going to grab my text. I'm going to bring it up into Krabby Daddy document. I'm going to lower it into here. I'm still holding the, the mouse. I'm going to release it, and there it is. Notice I have transparency. Whoops. Oh, see my head? I moved my head. Oops. What happened? I didn't. I'm in the wrong layer here. So I'm going to hit Command-Z, change that. I'm going to go back to layer 3, which is 
up here, which is my new text. And now I, oh, I hate that. I'm going to Command Z again. Come up here to layer three. And I'm going to use my arrow keys because they work. Now, the layer keys will help get this where I want it. And the truth is, I think what it'll do is come over here. Oh, oh you know, you have, to, you have to click right on the text. So I'm going to move it around, kind of see where I want it. And, well, I, need, I have some work to do. Um, but my overall point here is that I made the text in Illustrator. Um, and, oh, gosh, my transparency things are all messed up here. There it is. I moved it to the wrong place. Okay, so as you can see, you kind of need to take your time and pay attention to these things. But nonetheless, I've got all my pieces here, and now I can again double-click on the layer here. I can maybe play with the opacity of the blending modes. Actually, I didn't do that earlier now that I think of it. With this creeper layer, I could also double-click on this, and I can add a bevel or contour to it. It'll be the entire layer. So I'll cancel that and I'll show you this on the text by double clicking on the layer window for layer styles. And with that selected, within that new layer, I can add bevel and emboss. I can add a satin overlay. I can add a pattern overlay. Yikes, not do that. Uh, a drop shadow, variations of these things. Now these again are all things for you to play with and find the combination that works best for your concept, for your backgrounds, for everything. So this should get you going on your project too. There's a lot of things to consider here, but you know the biggest thing, you know, it's an old, old yarn I keep saying now though, is if you have an idea at the start, you get to this point and it works pretty well. Bottom line is if you don't have a good idea, you're just playing with stuff. You're kind of making a weird soup of images that don't quite taste right. Um, that's a weird way to put it, I know. Anyway, once you have it set, what you're going to do is go to File and Save. You want to make sure you save it first as a PSD and probably save it in that same Project 2 folder. I'm going to hit Save and I'll click OK. Now, here's the big deal. To get this printed, you're going to want to save it also as probably a JPEG. So let's go, let's choose JPEG in here. Oh, come on, I need to do this. JPEG. Why does that do that? JPEG. I'm holding it down now. JPEG. And I'm going to just click Save and I'm going to say OK. And then maybe as a PDF. I'm going to do a Save as a PDF. And the reason for this is that when you take it to get printed someplace, they, some places like to have PDFs, some places like to have JPEGs. Virtually nobody will want a PSD. Um, and that's more about the Walmart Kinkos of the world than it is about what's the best quality. For now, for this assignment, doesn't matter, just get it printed well. Now, getting it printed well is another movie also. In fact, that should be next up in line on these handouts. And be sure to watch the video on what makes a good project or what a good B movie poster. And I'm going to hit save PDF. There we go. Um, watch the other movie about what makes for a good B movie poster. And good luck with it. This uh, is a rather time intensive one. So, again, have a good idea, shoot your pictures, get all this stuff done, and just be great. That's easy. All right, we'll see you soon.